Thank you for joining me on Synthesis Workshop. This is a named reaction episode and we'll be checking out the Bayer-Williger oxidation. This is a reaction that can be a very convenient way to install oxygens in your molecule. Let's check it out. In a general sense, the Bayer-Williger oxidation is the conversion of an acyclic ketone to an ester or a cyclic ketone to a lactone. You can already tell from this slide that depending on whether you have a symmetrical or non-symmetrical ketone starting material, you may or may not have a selectivity problem. You could have ester formation on either side of the ketone. Let's have a look at the mechanism before getting more into that. The mechanism of the Bayer-Williger oxidation proceeds by protonation of the oxygen of the ketone using a peroxy acid, such as MCPBA, which gives a protonated carbonyl that can be attacked by the conjugate base of the peroxy acid. This produces a tetrahedral intermediate that's known as the Kriegi intermediate, named after the chemist who proposed that this is the key intermediate in the Bayer-Williger oxidation, rather than another type of intermediate such as a dioxirane or a carbonyl oxide, which had been proposed as potential intermediates. The Kriegi intermediate can then rearrange as shown, where we have one of the groups migrating to form a new carbon-oxygen bond as we regenerate the carbonyl. Here it's important to note that migration occurs with retention of stereochemistry on the migrating group. Then finally, a deprotonation results in the formation of the product. I'll quickly bring up two key points to highlight here. Key point number one being that the general order of migratory aptitude is as follows, with more heavily substituted alkyl groups being more prone to migration than alkyl groups that are less substituted. Key point number two to bring up is that the migrating group has to be antiperiplanar to the oxygen-oxygen bond that's breaking in order for there to be overlap between the carbon-carbon sigma bond of the migrating group and the oxygen-oxygen sigma star, which is the key antibonding orbital of the peroxy acid. I want to pause for a second to show a related reaction called the Dachin oxidation. In this reaction, we take an aromatic ketone or aldehyde and subject it to the same conditions we were looking at before for a Bayer-Williger oxidation to get to an acyl phenol which can then be hydrolyzed to get to a free phenol. To look at one quick example of how this reaction can be used, it was shown that this allylated vanillin derivative can be treated with hydrogen peroxide, boric acid, and sulfuric acid, which were found to be good conditions for this Dachin oxidation to arrive directly at the phenol product. That phenol product formed the core of fumamycin in a 2010 total synthesis. It's also worth pointing out that sometimes we can see a Bayer-Williger even when that's not what we're trying to do. One classic example of this is the Xi epoxidation, where a chiral ketone catalyst is used to generate a tetrahedral intermediate, which needs to collapse to form a dioxirane in order to do productive asymmetric epoxidation chemistry in this catalytic cycle. The tetrahedral intermediate can, however, undergo Bayer-Williger type rearrangement to form these esters, which are dead ends for the catalyst. Now let's switch over to applications and total synthesis. Borrowing an example I found in the Curdy Zako named reaction book listed at the bottom of the opening slide, we can see how the Shing group used MCPBA to carry out a Bayer-Williger that converted this methyl ketone into an acetoxy group. This occurred with retention of stereochemistry at the migrating center, marked in red, as we mentioned earlier. The oxygen installed during this transformation ended up appearing in the oxetane of the target structure, which contained the CD ring system of Taxol. In another quick example, this one from 2017, the Inoue and Fukuyama groups used a Bayer-Williger oxidation to convert the cyclic ketone starting material into the lactone product shown in good yield. This intermediate was able to be carried on to excess codeine and morphine. Finally, I want to look at a challenging case studied by the Magawa group in a total synthesis reported in 2018. Here, just two steps from the end, they found that applying what you might call standard Bayer-Williger conditions gave a mixture of products A and B in nearly equal amounts. However, they were able to circumvent the selectivity problem to a degree using conditions reported by the Bohm group, which used pivaldehyde, copper acetate, and oxygen. Fortunately, with these conditions, they were able to favor the desired isomer B in a ratio of 3.2 to 1. A subsequent DMP oxidation brought the secondary allylic alcohol up to the ketone. Then, to close out the story, they were able to convert B into the final target, selima bromide, by treating with silver trifluoroacetate and bromine and trifluoroacetic acid, which installed the two requisite bromines on the aromatic ring. And we'll end it there. I hope you enjoyed this named reaction episode. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date. And see you next time.